Welcome everyone. Today in the series about the quantitative aspects of chemical change, we are going to use everything that we studied so far to do some stoichiometric calculations. First, let's find out what the stoichiometric mole ratio is. There are steps that you can follow to do these calculations very easily. Then Keke and Aaron will do some experiments for us to see this at work. So what is stoichiometry? As we have seen, stoichiometry is the study of the quantitative aspects of chemical reactions. Stoichiometry is about measuring the amounts of elements and compounds in a reaction, and it's also about the study of the relationship between the amount of reactions used in a chemical reaction and the products produced in a reaction. Follow the next example and you will see that it is very easy to do. Consider this chemical equation. The reactants on the left-hand side of this equation are ethene with the formula C2H4, which reacts with oxygen. The products on the right-hand side are carbon dioxide and water. First, we need to balance the equation before we do the calculations. The reaction is balanced when 3 moles of ethene react with 5 moles of oxygen to form 6 moles of carbon dioxide and 4 moles of water. Stoichiometry shows us that the ratio is 3 to 5 to 6 to 4 from the balanced equation. This is called the mole ratio. The mole ratio gives the relative proportions of each reactant and product that are present. For example, if we double the ethene to 6 moles, then the oxygen required in the reaction also doubles to 10 moles. The amount of product formed would also change to 12 moles of carbon dioxide and 8 moles of water are produced. This is the first step in a four-step method we can use in stoichiometric calculations. Let's take a look at these steps. Step 1 is to balance the chemical equation. Step 2 is to convert the amount of substance that is given to you into moles. To do this, we would need to make use of the formula number of moles equals mass divided by molar mass. Step 3. Using the mole ratio, calculate the moles of substance that is produced or used by the reaction. And the final step is to convert the produced moles to the required amount asked in the calculation. This can be mass or volume, concentration or number of particles. Let's do one quick example before we end off this lesson. What mass of potassium chlorate must be heated to release 11,2 decimeter cubed of oxygen at STP? Thinking back to our steps, we start by writing a balanced equation for the reaction when potassium chlorate is heated. Potassium chlorate with the formula KClO3 forms potassium chloride with the formula KCl and oxygen with the formula O2. This equation is not balanced. To balance it, we need 2 moles of potassium chlorate that will form 2 moles of potassium chloride and 3 moles of oxygen. Now that the equation is balanced, we move on to step 1. Step 2 is to convert the information we're given to number of moles. Let's look at the question again. We were given that we want to form 11,2 cubic decimeters of oxygen. Since we are working with a gas at STP, we can use the formula number of moles equals the volume divided by the molar volume. When we substitute 11,2 for the volume and 22,4 for the molar volume, this gives us 0,5 moles of oxygen at STP. Now that that's done, let's move on to step 3. We need to use the mole ratio to determine how many moles of potassium chlorate are required to form 0,5 mole of oxygen. The mole ratio in the ballast equation is 2 moles of potassium chlorate forms 3 moles of oxygen. We only need 1,5 moles of oxygen. This means we must divide the ratio by 2. This gives us the required ratio of 1 mole is to 1,5 moles. The fourth and final step is to convert the number of moles back to what was required. 
the question stated that we had to calculate the mass of potassium chlorate. We start with the formula number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass. The required number of moles of potassium chlorate is one mole and we determine the molar mass by adding the atomic masses of potassium, chlorine and three oxygen atoms. Substituting these values we get 1 equals m divided by 39 plus 35 comma 5 plus 3 times 16. This gives us a final answer of 122,5 grams of potassium chlorate. We now know quantitatively that 122,5 grams of potassium chlorate is required to produce 11,2 cubic decimeters of oxygen gas at STP. With this, we come to the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we will explore these calculations a bit more, so be sure to join us then. Until next time, goodbye.